Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. We've got an unboxing today, so this is a little bit of a different type of unboxing than usual in that it's not fish, but it is fish related. So this is something that I've been very excited about um, and quite annoyed about recently, but we'll get into that a little bit more later. Let's get it open first. This is something that's come all the way from Canada um, via China. Uh, parts from all over the world. I've been waiting practically almost two years for this. Uh, if you've been a long time subscriber, you may have even seen a live stream of me when I actually bought this. So, this is very tough to open. Very well packaged. This is the Felix Smart Controller which was, it's a startup, it's a, the, the blurb is it turns your aquarium into a smart aquarium. And we'll talk a little bit about what that means when we have a look at it. So there we go. So the exciting bit is I love gadgets. I like all things electronic and gadgety. Um, and mainly that it's got a Knight Rider style LED that flashes back and forth across it. I would probably have bought it just for that. Oh, that's a nice a handwritten letter. Or envelope at least. And he spelled my name right. I'm assuming that's Tom Lamb. He's the guy who's been giving us all the, the updates. Um, it's a, a nice card to say thank you. Um, dear backers and early supporters, let me start off by saying how truly thankful we are for your early support of Felix Smart. Your belief in us and your and our vision is inspiring. For this we will be forever grateful. And it goes on yeah, for a little while, but that's a nice little touch. The things that have been going on in the world recently, frankly I'm amazed it ever happened um, because a lot of the parts and the manufacturing was done in China just as the coronavirus problems hit. So production was halted, slowed, all kinds of problems were had. Um, and for any kind of startup to get this far is difficult enough without all these kind of problems added in on top. So we've got a handbook here with instructions. Um, we'll take a look at them later. The first thing out of the box is a power supply with a UK plug. That's one of the things I'm frustrated about, but we'll come on to that in a bit. So, power supply, very good packaging. Um, a box of some description here. In fact, let's just get this out of the way. So, what I'm expecting here is a Felix Smart Controller itself, um, a camera. And a monitoring system, like a, it's essentially a Sennai monitoring system. So this is the camera. And the idea is that, the very basic feature is that you get to have a, a camera in your aquarium. It's a 360 camera. You can look around, you can monitor from anywhere via your phone. Now, there are obviously other solutions to do this that are a lot cheaper than this. So... If you want to just have a camera uh, in your aquarium, there are cheaper and probably easier ways to do it. But that's not what this is, it's not just one thing. So it's a USB device, as you can see. And then, oh no, I think this is the Senai piece, yes. Yeah, so that's the, the Felix branded Senai piece. And um, so you measure your temperature, your pH, um, and it works with slides. I'm sure you've all seen Senai before. So we've got a few slides here. Yep, that's the Senai bit. Um, I think these are the slides in here. So we'll put that to the side for the moment. Oh, and my favorite, a plastic sucker. Next out the bag is, oh, Aquachar, which is, I think, a kind of activated charcoal. That's from one of the backers. Um, I think he did some kind of deal or just gave everyone a free gift if you were an early backer and you get this charcoal. Um, so we can do a little review on that as well. Excellent. Content, content, content. Uh, another box here. 
packaged very well, um, considering it's come all the way from Canada and been stored in various locations along the way. It's done pretty well. So this is the camera. Oh, this is an altogether different beast. Oh, right. I see. So again, USB connected. It's got this clamp. It's huge. And there's the camera that sits in your aquarium. So, I'm not quite sure how we're going to mount this. That might be a challenge for later. But I recognise this clamp, actually. I'm sure I got sent one of these to review on Amazon a while back. Um, but it had like a mobile phone thing on the end of it, so you could sit it on your bed and watch your phone. Um, oh, the only reason I recognise it is because it had this stuff on it. But yeah, so that's the camera, that's the bit that sits in your aquarium and then you can view what's going on through your smartphone app. And then, oh, the Felix Smart itself. So this is the, the unit and it's a big old unit. Um, I think the, the shipping stuff said it was seven pounds for everything. But yeah, that's not inconsiderable. So I've not really decided which tank I'm gonna use this on yet or which, um, where I'm going to put it on this tank. I was thinking of putting it on the flower horn tank here. Um, so, yeah, when this is powered up, this has got a light that goes back and forth, a la Knight Rider. So on here, nothing really to see. It's branded Felix, no buttons or anything on the front. But when you go to the back, that's where you get um, some USB ports, power input on off. And then here we've got eight power connections. So the idea is that you can plug things into here, heaters, um, lights, skimmers, pumps, uh, wave makers, whatever it might be, plug it into here and these can all be individually controlled by your app on your phone and you can set light schedules, you can set CO2 solenoids to come on and off, um, you can monitor readings all kinds of things here. So this is essentially like a bunch of those smart sockets you've seen me use before, all put into one place. Now, the more astute of you who are UK viewers might notice a bit of a problem there. Look at the layout of these plugs. If I plug something in there, I then can't plug something in here. Which is a pretty basic design flaw. Um, so the guy, they are aware of it, the people, the, the Felix people are aware of it, they've made some posts on their Facebook group, they've let everyone know, yeah, they cocked up. They've given a solution, which frankly I don't think is brilliant, and it's to use these sort of things, your general power brick adapters, because at the moment, if you plug something in one, you can't use the other. Um, so you only get four plugs. So if you want to use more for four plugs, then at the moment, as an early adopter, I have to use something like this. This will be fixed uh, in the new version. So if you were to order one today, yours won't come like this. This is just like a little brucey bonus for the people who backed it early. Um, I could get something that's not an easy fix to turn them all around, but a fairly competent electrician could do that easily enough. But the, the interim fix is to use one of these blocks. That doesn't even work either. I then can't plug it. So the idea was that you use one of these power bricks here to give you an alternate um, socket to use. These particular ones can't both be plugged in. So I'm limited to four at the moment unless I go out and buy a bunch of these that are a bit shorter. I think it's because these ones are fused. These are a bit too long. So I need to find a short one for that. But even that's not brilliant because then you end up with this stuck on the back of it, making it even bulkier. And then your plugs are all coming out the all different directions. It's not brilliant. It's such a simple thing as well. You must have thought, well, looking at that, oh yeah, you won't be able to plug two things in at once. So these all need to be flipped 180 and to give that. But there you go, it's a nice looking kind of matte finish on it, I quite like it. 
Um, there is another issue. Um, that it was a manufacturing issue where the antenna, the wireless antenna in here, has been uh, attached to the wrong piece. It's been attached to the the I think the metal casing rather than the plastic casing and that affects the wireless signal so again there's a fix for it so I need to open it up and tweak that, pull off the antenna and put it back in the right place. But all in all that's what we've got. So we've got the main unit itself, we've got the camera which will plug into one of these USBs, we've got the Senai which will plug into another of the USBs and then depending which tank I use it on I'll have heaters, lights, maybe CO2 um, as well and we'll have to set up the app so it's been quite painful getting to this point there's a load of firmware updates and things to be done which I guess is to be expected with any new product especially as an early adopter it's kind of par for the course that you have to put up with these things but I'm going to try and get it set up do all the fixes that they've asked me to do I will probably won't show them all because frankly if you buy this thing now you're not going to get these problems so you won't have to do them um, one of the other problems the thing that really annoyed me was so yeah it cost me 250 pounds but they put the value as 600 Canadian dollars on the import documents which meant I had to pay another 100 pounds in import fees whereas if they put the actual value I'd probably saved quite a significant part of that so that was a little bit annoying. It also got held by UPS for the best part of two weeks almost uh, because, and this is according to UPS, is because they put reason for export other. I don't know why UPS couldn't have phoned me or asked or answered the phone when I phoned them so as I could have told them why the reason for export was that I was buying it. Um, Again, all things that you can kind of excuse because it's a new company, it's a startup. Um, I guess it's new for them as well, all this shipping and that kind of thing. But it's really annoying. Uh, the UPS were the fault for most of it that they wouldn't answer the bloody phone or answer any emails that I sent them. Um, they also tried to charge me £30 a day uh, for I think 11 or 12 days as a holding fee. So we, we had words about that. So let's get it hooked up, we'll do all the firmware updates, I'll do the moving of the um, antenna, I'll do the app updates and everything, get everything connected and then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. Then, so, um, it's taken me a while to get the Felix up and running properly, um, my hair hasn't fallen out just because it was so difficult. It's just I've had a haircut in between. Um, so we've got it plugged in. I've got my camera, my monitor plugged into the Felix. I've got my lights, heater and pump plugged in at the moment. So I'm just using three of the four available plugs at the moment. Um, teething problems. Uh, it wasn't the simplest thing to get set up. Uh, I'm using an Android device on my mobile phone. I, I just couldn't get it to set up with this so I had to use my iPad which worked a lot better, um, but yeah, there are constant firmware upgrades and releases and things like that happening, so it takes a while. So we'll dive into the app and I'll, I'll show you around at the moment where we are, um, he says. So the Felix Smart app, this is the kind of home page that you get. Um, you can see there you've got the ammonia readings, you've got your pH readings and your temperature readings. I don't think they're right at the moment. I think I've got a bit of an issue with my um, monitor at the moment. So the guys at Felix are looking at that with me. Um, so we're doing some investigations, but in there that's where they will show up. And underneath that you see the, the light bar which gives you some light readings. Um, again, not quite right, but it's probably something I've done wrong there rather than a problem with this thing. And then you get your, your eight plugs there at the moment. Um, you get to assign the names, you can turn them on and off. Or whatever you want there. So for, for instance if I go into filter um, I've got the the range, I can set a cycle, I can set a range and um, for what days I want them to come on and off but I've just got them on at the moment so that's fine. Um, it does take, it's a bit laggy so if I was to switch the, the pump off it might be a minute before between me pressing the button and actually going off. In fact I'll show you. So if I go into lights 
Turn on off lights, save that. So you'll see the lights go off on this tank here. So they still haven't gone off here because it's still green in the app. And it finally goes off. Just talk amongst yourselves. This would be a good time to ask you to subscribe and click that notification bell. It does work, it's just, there we go. So, as you can see, they've clicked off now. Um, so if I go back in, turn them back on, click save, then you'll see how long it takes for them to come on again. Um, well, that one came on really quick, so it's changeable, so hopefully that will get fixed with a firmware upgrade. Um, so the next screen we've got here down at the bottom is cam, which is camera. Again, very laggy, one of the most disappointing parts so far, if I'm completely honest. It's a 360 camera, so it's like one of those um, action cams that does the 360 picture, but it's just terrible. So, as you can see, I've pressed the button and we have still wait. The first time that I, I did this, it took five or so minutes to come on. It's come on now, so I mean it's fairly responsive once it does come on. And you can have a look around the thing. In fact, there you can see me. So if I there's Humphrey as well. So if I now start waving at the camera, you'll see that there's a bit of a lag, and this can be anywhere from 10 seconds to about a minute. So my arm may well get tired before we see this. And there's me chuntering away to the camera. Oh, no, not yet. I'm going to stop now, so you'll see me wave to the camera in a minute. Hopefully. Um, yeah, so the quality is just, it's not good, as you can see from this. The camera itself is actually capable of, there you go, now I've started with it. So you see, it's quite a lag there. And I'm on the same Wi-Fi network, a really good Wi-Fi, um, a really good router, um, same network, feet apart from everything, yeah, and it's just not brilliant. But I have seen some footage of the camera in RAW mode, and it is actually a fairly decent camera, so the hardware is capable. It's just something, whether it's the post-processing of this 360 element of it, stitching it all together, whether it's something to do with the Wi-Fi and network latency, it's just, it's not great. Um, there, there isn't many options, so you can record this, you can set up some kind of time lapse. Um, I've played around with it a little bit, but it was really just a bit disappointing. So again, we're hoping for firmware updates which will make this a lot better. Or just some options so you can switch between the 360 mode and the, um, what, just the raw format, which is really good. Then the other buttons we've got down here, there's one called AI Advice which is this page here, which has a number of headings, but nothing else. I, I don't know what this is. I have asked the question on the board, but I've not got an answer yet. Um, I don't know. And that's another one called automation. And again, this is another gray area. So at the top, we've got this button saying IFTTT control, and that's if this then that, which is a service where you can make up your own little mini programs if you like. So it's like if the temperature goes below such and such a degree, switch on the heater. Well, that's a bad example, but it's that, that type of thing. But at the moment, if I click that, the only option I get is to add one. And if I click that, I just get a blank screen. And no matter how long we sit here, this will just remain black. So we'll go back. The other thing here is where it says Felix AI automation on or off. If I click that, I get this lovely little graphic. Nothing else happens. So I think these are all like kind of little um, future Easter eggs of what's going to happen and updates to come. Um, and then if we go into the settings, you can see that I've called it kit because of the nice green light. Um, but you can set up your tank, you can fit in the size, add inhabitants. Um, it's, it's, I mean, it's fairly comprehensive there, but it does need a, um, a freeform entry there because there's nothing for flower horn, and that's what we're keeping in this tank, so we're a bit stuffed there. 
Um, go back, you can see your, all your sockets, you can assign the sockets and see what's going on there, all the kind of general stuff. Um, so, there we go. At the moment, it's really just a kind of fancy smart plug uh, with a camera and a monitor. So the camera's not great, the monitor doesn't work currently, So, but I'm not disheartened. Um, this is a product that I feel like it's, in, it's still in development. We're an, I'm an early backer. An early adopter of anything always gets the bugs. And yes, there's a few more bugs than I would have expected, but they're really responsive of the guys that are designing this, the Felix team. Uh, and hopefully the pain that I'm going through will stop anyone else going through this sort of thing at them when they get it. And they are fairly quickly running through um, releases and updates. So I'm hoping that once these problems all get fixed, I can't sing their phrases high enough. Um, the camera, it's, it's a great idea. There are other ways to do it, which currently are better than this way of doing it. The monitor device is basically a Senai, so you could just buy a Senai. Uh, and the, the box itself, it's currently just doing the same as any kind of, you know, these cheap, these things, they cost about a 10 or 15 quid, something like that. They can um, also be set up with Alexa, so as you can give them commands and switch them on and off remotely, all that kind of stuff, which is the same as the sockets on the back of that. Um, albeit that is a bit of a sleeker device. Where I think the real value will come for this is in the future development, because this is really just the base functionality that we're talking about. Get that right. Yes, it'll be a good thing, and people will say, mm, I'm interested or I'm not interested. The other things, when they start to bring in the AI and the automation, I think that's where the potential for um, really good and interesting things will come in. So um, I'm kind of hopeful for the future. Slightly disappointed right now, but still, it's a gadget and it does this. What more could you want? <laughs> um, other things that I, I don't know whether we will see, but I hope we see are... Um, there was this slip, an augmented reality or artificial intelligence based um, aquascaping guide. They talked about that where it would help you aquascape. Um, I was never sure how that was going to work, but it was in the, the very early promotional um, stuff. So I don't know whether that's been dropped or if it's something that's still going to happen. They talked about being able to use the camera to monitor the fish health. Again, not sure how that would work or whether it's still something that they're going to do. There was lots of things like, um, so there's a Facebook group for all the early adopters, early backers, and there was lots of discussions early on about what features we'd like to see. So people were throwing out things like, well, oh, it'd be really good to track trends. And so you could see your parameters over time and see what's going on in your aquarium. So hopefully things like that will start to come in. Um, and the guys who run this, the Felix people, they seem to be really open um, one of the, the good things about this is they've been completely open about all the problems that they've been having during this. I mean, they've, they've built this, this is a startup, and they've built this device during the worst pandemic in a hundred years, and they've still managed to get it out. Yes, it took them two years to get there, but most, most companies that size would just plain old fold, and that would be it. Um, but they've been really open, really um, clear about what's going on, what problems they've faced, what is working, what isn't working. Um, None of this, I mean, I've seen in other companies where it's just deny. No, that's not a problem. Oh, no, it's user error. It's that's that, the other. They're at least taking all the feedback they're getting, replying to it, and trying to come up with improvements or suggestions. Um, so this is a product which, like I say, I think it's best to think of it as in development rather than as a finished, polished product. A lot of the problems that I had, no one else will have them because we've now fed back as a community to Felix and they'll be going into the next generation and um, so you, you just plain won't see those problems and it'll be a much slicker experience and hopefully that'll continue for everything. So anyway this was just the first impressions it is um, like I say it is a developing product and um, I still I'm interested in it I like it I want to continue and see where this goes it's Felix Smart or Felix Dumb, it's definitely Felix Learning, so it's, it's a start and it has lots of potential, so hopefully we'll see some good stuff coming out of this in the months and years to come. 
Um, and as always, click that subscribe button and I will do some updates on this as new features come in. Hopefully you can let me know in the comments whether you like them or not. Thanks for watching, see you next time.